Do you remember as a child when your parents wanted you to be quiet, they'd put you in the corner and they'd give you one of those activity books? You know the ones, colour this nativity scene, dot to dot the zebra, or notice the five differences with the kids at the swimming pool. My favourite exercise or activity was the maze. You know, you start here and in as little time and with as little mistake as possible, get to the end goal. Now little did I know that's what running your own business is going to be like. I know where I started and I know where I want to get to, but getting there is anything but a linear progression. Now, a lot of people have covered that off tonight and that's why I don't want to stand here tonight and tell you how to run a business, how to growth hack it in six famous steps or how to improve your elevator pitch. Rather, I'd like to talk to you about the one tool which I think can add value to all the other things that you've learned through you, listening to blogs, uh, listening to podcasts, reading blogs, going to seminars. And that one word is perspective, or as I like to call it, FAC. Now, FAC, as you may think, is, I don't have Tourette's. It's actually a four-letter acronym that I've come up with, and I'll go through those four steps. <laughs> but before I do, I'd like to ask you a question. And it's a timeless, age-old question. Is it half full? Is it half empty? I'd challenge you and say, why does it have to be either? Why can't it be something you just want to drink? or something that you want to empty so you can put uh, your pens in it and put it back on your desk. It doesn't have to be what people perceive it to be. Everyone's perception is different and that's the key. Now, if I can take you back to your childhood again, can I get you to make two guns, one with each hand? So like this. Now, I'd like you to do this. Now put them together, close one eye. Now look through it. Take a look around and notice what you can see. Now do one thing for me, just turn it 90 degrees. And what you can see changes completely. Now, the parameters of what you've done haven't changed, but what you can see has. And this is perspective, and I think that this goes a long way towards uh, being a valuable tool for problem solving specifically. Now, the reason is something to do with pink elephants. Problems are like pink elephants. Once you've thought of them, it's impossible to stop thinking about them. If I, I, I challenge you to think right now, are you thinking of a pink elephant? Have you pictured it? Big ears, small ears, no ears. Whatever you might be thinking about, you've probably thought about it as soon as I said it, and problems are the same. Once you have a problem in front of you, trying to solve that problem becomes an insurmountable task. How do I do it? What should I do? Should I do this? No, I shouldn't do that. I should listen to this person. I shouldn't listen to this person. Have I done that? It goes round and round on repeat in your head, and often you lose sight of what you were trying to achieve because you're so focused on that. Perspective gives you another way, if you tilt it, of tipping that elephant over and coming at it. And when you look at it from a new perspective, new solutions often present themselves. It's how you frame it. And that brings me to the first letter of my acronym, framing. So if, you've, if you have a problem and you've tipped it over, how does that help you? And, and I'll give you an example of how I've used it to my, my benefit. I hate cold calling. Now, as a small business owner, that's probably not a strength that you should be proud of. And given that I have a, a family who've uh, been highly successful salespeople from my grandfather, my father, my uncle, you'd think that it would run in the blood, but it missed me. So when it comes to driving new business, the idea of cold calling turns me cold and I, I dread it. And I, I know from experience of having picked up the phone because you need to, you need to know where the next client's coming from. You think, well, all right, I'll do it. And I know I underwhelmed people when I was on the phone. I, my, my enthusiasm wasn't there. The, the way I'd present things just was a little bit stilted. So I wasn't impressing people. And I got more stressed about it. I've got a cold call again today. What am I going to do? How am I going to do this? Okay, how am I going to improve? I know I need to get more sales because without sales, I'm not going to have a bank balance. And as Sarah and other people have talked about, you know, it, it goes round in your head as well. And people, you, you think people are watching me, people are judging me. And so the problem exacerbates itself. So I sat down one day and I put the phone down and I went, okay, what can I do? What can I change? How can I get better at cold calling? How can I turn something I'm not good at into something that I'm good at and helps drive business? And then it hit me. I needed to turn that elephant sideways and I needed to look at it differently. And I realized I needed to look at what I was good at and figure out how I could plug that into the end goal, which was getting more sales. And I realized I'm great networking. When I get to time in front of people, when I get the chance to talk to you and to figure out exactly what it is and develop, uh, that you're looking for and develop rapport with you, I have a much better 
uh, energy level and I, I come back with ideas and I excite, excite the people I'm talking to and that conversation turns into a coffee. And as often as not, that coffee turns into a proposal and then the proposal might turn into business which turns into referrals and the cycle perpetuates itself. So I realise that I don't have to get better at something I'm not good at. I'd need to take a strength and work out how I can use that strength to attack the problem in a different way. Now the second letter of my acronym is the accelerator conundrum. Now, as uh, Tarek said, I was made redundant and I, long story I won't go into, but I decided to set up a business and then once I made that commitment, I thought this is fantastic. I put my head down and I got a piece of advice which if you've gone into your own business or you're thinking about it, people will give you as well. And that was put your head down, don't let anything stop you and just keep on going. And I did that and I got new clients that came on board and I was excited. I was working day and night. I was burning the candle at both ends, but I was loving it. The, cl the clients were happy. I was thinking in strategic ways for them and the results were there. But then as projects get handed over or clients push back and they defer projects or they don't like it and they cancel them, the pipeline in the background that you haven't been developing starts to creep up and say, we don't have anything here. You need to do something about this. And I got to a point where I was just pushing ahead. Okay, I've got to work harder. I need to pitch more. I need to do this. And I was going around in my head again. And then someone said to me, they said, you've got to take your foot off the accelerator a bit. You've got to step back because you're charging towards something at a million miles an hour and you're not taking stock of the things that are around you and reading those signs. And you're, you're heading headlong into disaster. And I went, hmm, you're right. And I realized that I was starting to stop chasing the business that I liked and which I was passionate about, stopped going for the business which I could really give benefit to that client with and started to lower my prices and buy the work by just being the cheapest person there. And I had more work coming in and I had my head down but I wasn't enjoying it and therefore the result I was giving clients was probably not the best work either. So I realised I had to step back and the thing that I would say to you is don't ever be scared of stepping back because when you step back, you often see more than you saw before. Your perspective opens back up. Your tunnel vision drifts, well, doesn't drift, disappears and you can actually see what you're needing to see rather than just focusing on one goal. The C in my um, acronym stands for challenging the status quo, which Lauren mentioned sort of before. Um, and for me, I'll step it back and quote Shakespeare. Uh, Hamlet said famously, to be or not to be? That is the question. Now, I'm not referencing whether or not you should or shouldn't be in business. I'm, I'm talking about something a little bit different to that. I'm, I'm talking about why you're doing something. And if you've gone into business or you're thinking about business yourself, I'd put this to you as, as a way of proving my point. Did anyone when they went into business think to themselves, you know what, I'm going to go out there and do the same thing as everybody else. No one ever thinks, I want to go out there and produce the same thing at the same time, at the same price, whatever it might be as everybody else. Rather you think, I've got a product or service that I want to take to the market and I want to give them this because I know I can make a point of difference, give them something that's better, change their lives, give them an experience, educate them, whatever it might be. By doing, having that passion at the beginning, you're buoyed and that's why you go into your own business. When we're in business, it's often easy to lose sight of that again. And so it's about making sure that you're not to be, you're not to be the same as everybody else, but you're not to be the same as everybody else. And it doesn't mean challenging the status quo just because, it doesn't mean you're being different just because, but it's about flipping the perspective and looking at things from a different way. Because when you look at things differently and you challenge and you ask complex questions and you, you ask things to try and learn scientifically or to understand why something is, you get this whole new way of approaching things. And that, that brings me to the, the capstone of my acronym, the K, knowledge. And they say knowledge is power. I would argue the opposite of that. It's what you don't know, which is potentially infinitely more powerful. The reason I say that is, you guys have all come here tonight, not because you think you know everything, but because you want to see what more you can learn, what more you can pick up, what more you can take back to your own businesses, back to your own jobs, and apply in a new way because it gives you a new way of thinking of things. And that's why I say knowledge is, more pow uh, is less powerful than what you don't know. And there's one question which I, I think can help you on that journey. Uh, and you can, you can adapt this to your own needs as you need. 
but it's the question of what don't I know? You know, what don't I know about my customers? What do my customers not know about our service or our products? Or what do uh, we not know about what our competitors are doing? When you can figure out what you don't know more than what you do know and stop making marketing decisions or business strategy decisions based on what you do know and what has become accepted in the market and you start making plans and strategies around what you don't know and filling in gaps because you know where your strengths lie and how they'll plug into those areas of the unknown, that's where you can truly get ahead because you start making a difference again. You start going back with your passion. And that is where it becomes powerful. Now, whether or not you're going into your own business, you are in your own business, Business, like life, is never a linear curve. And it's important to remember that when you're adapting your business, that it, you, you are willing to be flexible to go up, to go down, to go sideways, to go backwards. If you're happy to do that and you know that you can step back and look at the bigger picture, take stock of it, change the perspective, that's where you can get ahead. And I'll leave you with a quote from someone much smarter than I am, Albert Einstein, who once said, logic will get you from A to B, but imagination will take you everywhere. Thank you. Thank you.